I'm here with uh, Dr. Joseph Cooper, the uh, Dr. J. Keith Motley Endowed Chair for the Sport Leadership Program and uh, Assistant to the Chancellor for Black Life on Campus, is that correct? That's correct. Um, we're here uh, just to discuss um, his thoughts on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Week, uh, which is coming up October 18th through 20th. Um, and we're, he's here working with uh, SAC to just give us his thoughts. Uh, so the first question, uh, how would you describe allyship and why is it vital to uh, progressing diversity and inclusion? Thank you, Jackson. Thanks for the question. Uh, I define allyship as providing support for a group that you do not belong to. So we are all human beings, so we all be belong to the human race. But for example, if I identify as a cisgender man, if I'm providing support for women's rights, women's equality, I'm serving as an ally for women in that instance. If I identified as a white man and I'm providing support for the Black Lives Matter movement, I'm serving as an ally for that particular group. So we all possess multiple identities and we don't belong to every group. Right. So we have different nationalities, ethnicities, sexual identities, different religious groups, uh, different abilities. Um, for example, there are certain people who have unique and adaptive intellectual and physical abilities. If you don't identify as someone who's been labeled as having a disability, you can be an ally for individuals who have unique and adaptive abilities. So allyship is very important because numerically, there are more allies than there are people who belong to any given group. So in order for substantive change to happen, you have to have allies who are willing to leverage their privilege, their resources, and their influence uh, to champion a particular cause. Uh, how can someone work to improve their allyship, and what can we all do um, just to do better in that aspect? Great. That's another great question. Um, I use kind of a basic framework around educate, reflect, connect, engage, and evaluate. So in terms of educating yourself, there are a number of organizations that exist that champion particular causes. So for example, there's a group called Athlete Ally that is designed to help champion not only inclusiveness in sport, but particularly understanding across different identity groups, particularly sexual identity groups. So the first thing is just to educate yourself. You know, Do research what organizations exist, what are some of the advocacy and activist efforts that are already in place? The second thing is just to reflect. Reflect on your own identities, reflect on your comfort level. There may be certain issues that you may not be comfortable speaking out about, but you may want to support in other ways. So just being honest with yourself and reflecting. The third one is to connect. So connect with those organizations. Once you find out who they are, what they're doing, make sure that you're establishing lines of communication. Particularly, you could connect via social media. You could follow them, you could tweet something that they did. Obviously, I encourage interpersonal interaction, so reaching out to them directly, attending a meeting, attending an event. You don't always have to be the main participant, but you could just be an observer where you're connecting, but you're also educating yourself. The fourth thing is to engage. So they may organize a rally, they may organize an event where you wanna play a more prominent role, not just as an observer and as an attendee, but as an active participant in that particular effort. Um, and then the last thing is to evaluate. You know, How effective was our allies, my allyship? How effective was the advocacy effort that was initiated? How effective was the activism that may have been performed? And what are ways in which individually and collectively you can work together to improve the outcome for that particular group. So educate, reflect, connect, engage, and evaluate. What impact do you feel that athletics and both collegiate and professionally uh, have had towards forwarding this conversation of allyship and inclusion? I think uh, sports have played a tremendous role. I mean, we can go back to the 1936 Olympics with Jesse Owens winning four Olympic gold medals, and this is prior to the passage of the civil rights uh, landmark legislations. We could talk about Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier in Major League Baseball in 1947, which was um, not only was it nine years, roughly nine years before Brown v. Board of Education was passed, which desegregated public schools, 
but it was also over 20 years before Title IX was passed, which opened up doors for women and girls to participate in sport. Um, we could look at the advocacy of Billie Jean King in the 1970s around gender equity in sport, as well as sexual identity inclusion in sport. Um, so I think professional and intercollegiate sports, and even more recently with Colin Kaepernick taking a knee and opening up conversations around police brutality, around the mistreatment of certain vulnerable populations in our society, whether it be based on their race or their social economic status. So um, I think that athletics at the professional and intercollegiate level have a vital role to play in social change in our society. One, because sport brings people together from diverse backgrounds. You can have different political views, different religious backgrounds, but if you're rooting for the Red Sox, you're rooting for the Red Sox. If you're rooting for the Beacons, you're rooting for the Beacons. And because it allows people to come together and there is a collective shared joy for the sport, it can allow other conversations to open up. So I always tell uh, student athletes and athletes at the professional level, focus on what connects you to somebody first and what you agree on before you engage in more difficult conversations about where there might be some differences. Because if you can establish that connectivity, just like as you're a member of a team, you have different interests than all of your teammates, but you all wear the same uniform and you come together to win a championship. So if you can frame it in the same way that, hey, we're on the same team, even if we disagree on certain things, ultimately we want the world to be a safe, welcoming, healthy place for all of us, then we can work together for that. So I think the visibility and the platform of college and professional sports, as well as its ability to bring people together, allows certain conversations and relationships to develop in a more harmonious way than if it was outside of sport. Uh, finally, what type, of, uh, what type of advances is UMB making as a campus to make diversity and inclusion a top priority? Well, one, the SAC has been very active in having events and platforms like this where we're generating more awareness about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, last spring, the Sport Leadership and Administration Program, in conjunction with the Athletics Department, held our first annual Equity and Sport Leadership Conference. We had Dr. Richard Labchick, who is the founder of the Institute for Diversity and Ethics in Sport at the University of Central Florida, as well as the founder of the Sport and Society Program here here in Boston at Northeastern uh, as our keynote speaker. So Dr. Labchick shared throughout his lifetime how he's seen the landscape of race and gender and other identity groups, um, the experiences that people, not only athletes, but media pers personnel, coaches, management, and owners ownership have changed over time, but in some cases have either gotten worse or remained the same. Um, so there are a number of efforts that, um, that are happening on campus. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had a, a celebration for the 50th anniversary of Title IX, and we invited uh, ESPN short film director and uh, an athlete named Noor come to campus and talk about combating religious discrimination in sport. Um, and it was a great event. We had a number of students come out who learned about Noor's story, how she was disqualified from a cross country event for wearing her hijab. She identifies as a Muslim woman and she subsequently went to the state uh, legislature at, um, in the state of Ohio to get a, a law passed that would ban discrimination based on religious expression. Um, particularly within sporting contests. So there are a number of things that we're doing. You and your peer student athletes are having conversations with each other about different things that you're seeing in the media that are happening in sport. Um, and we're gonna continue to work together on collaborative efforts to ensure that um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is championed not only on the field, on the court, in the pool, or on the ice, but also uh, in our community and our society more broadly. Thank you again to Dr. Cooper for joining me and uh, SAC as a whole for this quick interview just about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, we'd like to give you this on behalf of SAC and uh, just thank you for your time. We, we appreciate it. Thank you.